their power coming on and off. So I called and found out with all this power now, they told me some birds now found a new perch. I said, only now these birds want to go and sit on this line now across the Barbies River. They sent me some dead birds. They did some walk across now. They found some dead birds now. They sent me the pictures. So they brought in some protection against birds now. So they said they have to shut down for six or eight hours. Eight hours to put in this protection to chase off the birds or shock the birds or something like that. So I said, I hope when this goes in, it's not going to be something else. So, respect to Miss May Thomas, um, in her debriefing in, after difficulties with the U.S. Uh, law enforcement and immigration, what did she tell you she was uh, interrogated about? Well, she said they asked her about the Mohammed. It went up from $70 that we are budgeting. Now we are budgeting, we are budgeting, well, we are paying over $105, maybe $110 per barrel. So that means yesterday they told us 66 million US dollars more than what GPL budgeted for fuel. But we are not increasing the, the price of electricity. The, in another country, they would have increased the price of electricity. So that means before the end of the year, we'll go to Parliament for a supplementary of 66 million US dollars for just subsidizing electricity. We have to go to the Parliament for that before, before the recess on the moment. I sa we said that openly and the President indicated that we have not been formally notified. So there are many people in this country who were dealing with the Mohammeds because at that time they were not sanctioned. There was no kicker, gas turbines, um, Esikubo coast, Letem, Linden. So eventually, if it's technically feasible, we have some good price offers, but we don't know if it's technically feasible as yet to take the power off the, the pipeline and, and containerize them and move them into these areas so we can supply these areas that are not connected with the Demerara grid, the Demerara Barbies grid, that and they're off. They're, um, that whether we can supply those areas. One love, Delta 9 family, welcome back to the flight. Now, if you haven't already, take some time out. Press that thumbs up button and subscribe so that you'll stay updated on all these entertaining, trending topics in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Ask Norton about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, all right. So let me go. Tennis, you come back in second round, right? Right. Cassie Henry, DPI. Dr. Yeah. Jagdeer, just a few questions. At a recent press conference, you mentioned that the government is looking to acquire an additional 30 megawatts of power in a similar agreement to the one you have with Car Powership. Is that still the plan? Could you update us on yeah, that? Yeah, we were, we were looking to see if we can. Right now, they said to me they have, they have power in the system, adequate power, that allows some maintenance of the other assets that we've had. Recently, in the morning, I see the, the power coming on and off. So I called and find, found out with all this power now, they told me some birds now found a new perch. I said, only now these birds want to go and sit on this line now across the Barbies River. They sent me some dead birds. They did some walk across now. They found some dead birds now. They sent me the pictures. So they brought in some protection against birds now. So they said they have to shut down for six or eight hours. Eight hours to put in this protection to chase off the birds or shock the birds or something like that. So I said, I hope when this goes in, it's not going to be something else. So it is, anyhow. Yesterday we met um, with GPL. We looked at them. Um, they're going to be about a $200 million project. So I explained the components already, the five components that are already financed and going. The pipeline, the power plant, 
the NGL facility. The project to evacuate the power from, from Wales to the control center and the control center itself. So that will bring all of the power to about Eccles here for distribution. So the existing system now, we have to look at that with all that new power in the pla place, that it, we have grid stability to distribute the power, transmit and distribute the power. So they've come up and they've gone to tender for about $200 million of work to upgrade the grid, put in more transformers, change out the lines and stuff like that so we can have a more stable distribution system. Because even if you have more power, if in your area they don't have adequate transformers, etc., you would always have the spot. Not, maybe not the blackout for the whole country, but in these areas too. So they're doing that now. They've gone out to tender. Then we have to transmit large amount of power now to Barbisto. In Linden, it's off the grid, so we are thinking about eventually moving a transmission main up there, which is going to be costly, and then power the highway from there. But we now look at taking a big new transmission main up to Burbies. So that's where they're on the drawing board for that one too. We're exploring using some of the gas to move turbines into Bartica, gas turbines, um, Esikobokos, Letem, Linden. So eventually, if it's technically feasible, we have some good price offers, but we don't know if it's technically feasible as yet. To take the power off the, the pipeline and, and containerize them and move them into these areas so we can supply these areas that are not connected with the Demerara grid, the Demerara Barbies grid, that and they're off. They're, um, that whether we can supply those areas from using gas as a fuel. Because even when we complete this project, we still have to supply those areas to Bunker C or or find other sources, solar. We're putting in solar panels in Esikubo, in Burbies, in Linden, uh, about 35 megawatts. We're thinking about another 25 megawatts of solar in Demerara. So it's a combination of all of these things. And, and a lot of work is going on, a lot of work and planning behind these. Ultimately, we have, we have a stable grid. Um, that's it. So yeah, you were, what was it? I was asking, um, you mentioned... Oh, the 30. Yeah. So we, if we can if we can integrate the 30 megawatts. So, for example, they're now working. I think Cummins has been awarded a contract to do a, a 5 million upgrade from Kingston to Sophia. So if you bring the power there now, if you bring additional power to, the, to Kingston, you can take it to the substation at, the, at Sophia because that one line is not adequate to take the power there. So it's where you can integrate the power to. We could have brought in the bigger power ship, which is nearly 100 megawatts of power, uh, 70 something, nearly 80, and connect it here at Kingston, but the lines can't transmit it. So we had to take it to Burbies and hook it there and then bring back the power to Demerara, into Demerara, because you could hook it there if we had hooked it up at Kingston, we would have lo 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 lost all the existing power units there because the line can only transmit what we're generating there now, not additional power. So eventually when that is done, then you can bring in more power there too. And maybe ultimately because the power from Wales is coming around this way to the Margaret and then going to Vreden Hoop, we're building a transmission named to Vreden Hoop. So maybe eventually, that is to supply region three, eventually we can have a loop and bring it across back here. So in case you have issues there, you can move the power over here. So, so there's a lot of, lot of um, things at the drawing board now that we are looking at. So if we get the additional 30 and we can integrate it of a similar nature, where you can just hook up like we hook up this ship then we'll do it. If not, we'll have to make sure we maintain, do this reprieve to maintain the units that we had deferred maintenance on. 
uh, because you were right at peak demand all the time, your capacity, and uh, until until the um, until the gas to energy project comes on stream. You additionally, can you give us an update on when the government plans to commence rolling out the uh, vouchers for cervical cancer testing? They haven't done that as yet. They, Frank Anthony told me three weeks. They told me within three weeks, and that was like a month and a half ago. They told me they'd be ready for both the spectacles. Next Tuesday it starts. Okay. For both the spectacles and the, the cervical ca cancer, the screening, because we got to get it out. It's a large number of persons, maybe 350,000 women will we can have to collect that voucher and then go in for the test. And finally, at a recent press conference, you also mentioned, I know you mentioned that the $7 billion cost of living allocation will be um, utilized um, yeah, near yeah. to the end of the year or uh, later in the year. But can you say what immediate measures the government is looking at now to lessen the impact? Yeah, because the, the problem is that a lot of this is not driven by domestic factor. It's imported inflation. So I see a lot of things written, you know, and and the the analysis are shoddy because like this this freight rate is increasing from three five to twenty thousand for a container coming from China. There's we can remove the taxes, but very little else you can do on that sort of thing. None of our inflation is driven by taxes because inflation is driven by cost push from the government. So the government type inflation is when you increase taxes, you increase the fees for government services. But look at what we have done. We've reduced the fee, we've reduced the taxes for about 40 billion, all the VAT, etc. We have removed the 50% tax on fuel, which is about a 75 million billion dollars um, benefit to people. So everybody benefits from it, but they don't see, see it directly. We have removed that, the 50% excise tax. We've removed a ton of value-added tax. We have adjusted the freight costs for calculation of taxes. Those are things we did. We have kept, we have absorbed the price increases that should have come for electricity because of fuel increase. So the price of fuel went up from $70 that we are budgeting. Now we are budgeting we're budgeting, well, we are paying over $105, maybe $110 per barrel. So that means yesterday they told us 66 million US dollars more than what GPL budgeted for fuel. But we're not increasing the, the price of electricity. The, in another country, they would have increased the price of electricity. So that means before the end of the year, we'll go to Parliament for a supplementary of 66 million US dollars for just subsidizing electricity. We have to go to the Parliament for that before, before the recess because of just fuel prices. And people would say, oh, we're not getting no benefit. The government not dealing with cost of living. 66 million US dollars. But if you look at the quantum of fuel and the movement from $70 to $100 and something dollars. So this is, we, no, no government has been doing this sort of thing. I've no one have done it. They had it where the fuel prices were $30 a barrel. And still they kept the prices at where it is today. $30 a barrel. Now it's over $100 a barrel. So, we have been, none of it has been pushed by government services. If we didn't do that, if we didn't keep water rate constant and electricity rates constant and remove the taxes from fuel so that transportation, you know, the price wouldn't increase for gasoline and diesel too much, it would have pushed up transportation, water, electricity. And, and people don't recognize that the tens of billions of dollars going into that. They're looking for specific and out. But there's some that we can control, like the freight, freight increases. Can I do a follow-up to the earlier question? With respect to Ms. May Thomas, um, in her debriefing in, after difficulties with the U.S. Uh, law enforcement and immigration, what did she tell you 
she was uh, interrogated about? Well, she said they asked her about the Mohammeds. And did that flag anything in your head? Yeah, but they asked, but it was precisely because of that that one love delta nine family welcome back to the flight now the story sir juvenile that jack Dio had to present it with a chuckle for you not to take it the wrong way right away as soon as he said birds cause the blackout birds cause the blackout so everything else is gone. So we can just say, yo, that's up to the birds. The birds caused the blackout. Could you believe that? I mean, the VP, allegedly, even him, from his tone and the way that he delivers, you can see that he himself might not even believe what they allegedly were saying to him. So now we got to ask ourselves, even with all of those millions and millions of dollars already invested to make sure that this blackout thing is a thing of the past. The problem that we didn't deal with yet that we need to deal with is birds. So now we, I wonder how that problem and how much that problem will cost to rectify. Because seemingly, we still have the problem of the blackout and everything that is going on as it's related to the outages in Guyana, mainly in the city body, charge tongue, charge tongue and all around surrounding Barbies, different, different places. People complaining about blackout, blackout, blackout. What's going on? This is the fastest growing economy in the world, given so it means there's going to be a strain on the electricity. We get that. But how long does this really take to rectify? And at what cost? And is the right equipment? And better yet, are the right people knowledgeable in what's really going on here? Dealing with what really needs to be dealt with. Because if it's not, then... Guyana is wasting a lot of time and incurring a whole lot of unnecessary discomforts. For what? We ain't supposed to live in like the body. We ain't supposed to live in like the that press conference that the VP did, the last press conference. He said a whole lot. He said a whole lot. And he even said they had knowledge that me was already questioned by u.s authorities about the muhammads they had the knowledge about that already they already knew that she had been questioned yet she was placed in the position she was placed let's hear directly from the vp let's hear directly what he has to say about me being questioned about the Mohammeds and if it rose any red flags to him or not. And just his insights as to what's really going on. What's really going on with these sanctions. Let's hear from the VP himself right now. If you haven't already, buddy. If you haven't already, thumbs up the content. Thumbs up this content so that everyone can have an opportunity to hear both sides of the story, to hear a neutral presentation of everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. One love, and I'll catch you in the next flight. To Miss May Thomas, um, in her debriefing in, after difficulties with the U.S. Uh, law enforcement and immigration, what did she tell you? she was uh, interrogated about well she said they asked her about the Mohammeds. and did that flag anything in your head yeah but they asked but it was precisely because of that that she moved from the ministry of uh, home affairs to labor and we didn't at that time 
there was no notification about any investigation. You yourself said, or you asked me a question at the beginning. The government had not been formally notified uh, that there was the, that in, uh, no investigation, nor that they would impose sanctions on the Mohammeds. I sa we said that openly, and the president indicated that we have not been formally notified. So there are many people in this country who were dealing with the Mohammeds because at that time they were not sanctioned. There was no pending um, investigation of that nature of a smuggle um, goal against them here. So they, what did they ask her about the Mohammed? Uh, no, we, I, di I, don't, I didn't go into details. I'm not... I, I didn't go into details. Uh, and and that did not flag anything in yes, your Yes, well, head? Bec because of that, that is why she was moved from the Ministry of Home Affairs. But she said that clearly. That we asked her what, 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 in fact, the report that came, that I saw, he said, they asked her about the moment. A natural way to stay ready, baby. Because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you, Mr. C. Fightment against a lot of people. A lot of people fighting for travel. I understand some of them even fighting to travel to Letem, although Letem is a part of Guyana, because you might left to go to Letem, and the plane end up in Brazil, and then you get a trip from Brazil straight to the U.S., free of cost free of course. So I sit in back and I wait in. And I sit in back and I wait in because I know having um, having some knowledge of how the system works that there's no way that a convicted drug trafficker would have been sentenced to time served if he did not give them valuable information. <laughs> 